Hi everyone, it's Taylor and welcome back to Cat's Couch. I'll be your host today. Many things have actually happened over this past week. Let's start with the fact that April the giraffe has still not had her baby. There was all this hype about it and before we knew it, millions of people have been watching April's journey. She is actually set to give birth at any moment. The live stream video feed from the Animal Adventure Park in Harpersville, New York has turned 15 year old April the giraffe famous. But there have been many attempts by animal rights campaigners to get the stream shut down because they declared it sexually explicit. Eventually, YouTube briefly pulled the 24-hour live stream, which had begun on February 10th, for nudity and sexual content, leaving viewers outraged. The live footage was later restored on February 24th and has gotten more than 15 million views from across the world. Everyone is waiting for the day the cute little baby's born, but keep in mind it'll be 6 feet and 150 pounds. Right now, the baby is basically performing acrobatic routines inside of April, so she must be in terrible pain. Also, giraffes are pregnant for up to 464 days or 15 months, one of the longest periods of any animal. On another note, but still about live streams, there is another live 24-hour broadcast called Kitten Academy, where you can watch playful kittens, baby kittens that were just born on February 26th, and the parent cats. These cats are actually adoptable and are located in Illinois. If you're looking to contact the foster people, send an email to headmaster at kitten.academy. Now, let me inform you on some good things that happened this past week. During a soccer game last week, Martin Berkovec, the goalie playing for Bohemians 1905, was knocked unconscious. Francis Cohn, the player from the opposing team, ran over and took Berkovec's tongue out of his mouth and saved him from choking. Another positive event that happened was while on a boat trip, a family spotted a whale trapped in a fishing net. They swam over and simply freed the whale from the net, and in return, the animal thanked them by doing a crazy jump in the air. One last thing would be someone stepped up to pay for an elderly woman's groceries at a UK supermarket, and the heartwarming moment was caught on camera. We need more stuff like this occurring in the world instead of the violence and nastiness we hear about every single day. For more specific news based in North Carolina, the store, H.H. H. Gregg, which has fought for years to win customers' competition from Best Buy, Walmart, Lowe's, and Home Depot, announced on the Thursday that just passed it'll be closing 88 of its 229 stores, including the one in Mooresville that's right near Best Buy. This will result in 1,500 jobs to be eliminated company-wide. The State Board of Education voted Thursday to close Durham, North Carolina's Kestrel Heights Charter High School after problems over an eight-year period in which students were given diplomas despite not completing required classes. This issue will cause more than 280 undergraduates to transfer to other schools and two dozen employees to lose their jobs. One last thing about local news would be downtown Mooresville is having their fifth annual St. Patrick's Day Parade on March 11th. Now, let's get into movies. There are some films coming out in March you will have to watch, one of them being Kong Skull Island, which is being released tomorrow. This film includes Tom Hiddleston, Oscar winner Brie Larson, and Samuel L. Jackson, wow, I've never heard of his name before, who travel to an uncharted island and stumble upon King Kong. Another movie is Life, which is coming out March 24th. An international space station crew discovers a microscopic extraterrestrial on Mars, but events quickly turn terrifying as the movie looks to provide plenty of claustrophobic jump scares and fear dealing with space. This film has a strong ensemble cast, including Ryle Reynolds, Jake Gyllenhaal, and Rebecca Ferguson, and a script from the writers of Deadpool. One last event I would like to talk about that happened this past week was something with Britain. Britain actually voted to leave the European Union on Thursday, which one, caused the world to be stunned, and two, global markets go crazy. 59% of voters supported the decision, and Britain's Prime Minister David Cameron announced his resignation after the vote. Today we have some video footage created by our fellow production crew member Avery Desmarai about high school musical that is being presented at our school. Production crew member Zachary Beeler, who created a video on weird scholarships that actually exist. A video put together by our DDR audio engineer, Savannah Robinson, to do a review on YouTube's live stream feature. I will be talking to Steven Stroop, a student, about war reenactments. We will see you after the commercial break.
wish we had a PS3. This is whack. I wish for new stereo system. I wish for a new stereo system. I wish to go from 301 was here. <gasps> yes. So you got any friends? We now first have a video for you guys about High School Musical that's being performed at our school. Enjoy watching. Those were some cool facts I didn't know about. Also, it's being performed at Lake Norman High School. We will see you right after the commercial break.
Dude, that girl that sat next to us at the movie yesterday was so hot. Oh, I know. You went to the movies? Without me? Did you go see the Avengers? You did? Here, Joey, chill. Eat this. Why? You get all whiny when you're hungry. Better? Better. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Now, welcome back by the way, now we have a video put together by Zachary Beeler, our production crew member, and the video is about weird school scholarships that we didn't know existed. Let's watch. The Defensive Driving Scholarship offers a $1,000 scholarship if chosen based on nothing more than a one and a half minute video about, you guessed it, defensive driving. Oddly enough, you must like their Facebook page to be considered. The Duck Brand Stuck at Prom Scholarship Contest is a fun challenge as a couple get to make their entire prom outfits out of nothing but duct tape. The winner winning a whopping $10,000. If you have the talent and time to make such a costume, this would be perfect for you. The Common Knowledge Scholarship Foundation offers a great array of knowledge-based trivia quizzes that when won can range in earnings of $250 all the way to $2,500. These scholarships actually renew monthly as well, so make sure to check back every month so you can get as much as you can. The American Fire Sprinkler Association Scholarship is a particularly easy scholarship where you only have to take a 10-question multiple-choice test after reading an essay about fire sprinklers. For $2,000, it's not a bad scholarship to try. The National Potato Council Scholarship is an incredible scholarship for those looking into the advanced study of agribusiness that enhances potato study. For a whopping $10,000, studying potatoes might not be his bad career choice for some. The Shout It Out scholarship is probably as straightforward as it gets. Prompted with the simple question, if you could say one thing to the entire world, what would it be and why? In 250 words or less, this is an easy $1,500 for up and coming college students. The Tall Clubs International Scholarship serves as a way for exceptionally tall people to gain financial aid. With a height requirement of 5 foot 10 for women and 6 foot 2 for men, this scholarship is an easy $1,000. The Zombie Apocalypse Scholarship, sponsored by Unigo, asks you the simple question, what would you do to survive the zombie apocalypse? With only 250 words or less, you must flesh out a plan in a well-constructed essay. For those zombie enthusiasts, this could be an easy $2,000 scholarship. A scholarship for fans of Magic, The Gathering, the Gamers Helping Gamers Scholarship offers a $5,000 reward for not an essay about your love of the game, but a poem to truly express your feelings for it. The Asparagus Club Scholarship, oddly enough, is a biannual scholarship for people studying to become an independent grocer. For $2,000, such a specific set of requirements is bound to fit someone perfectly for their college plan. The Flavor of the Month Scholarship, also sponsored by Unigo, asked the ever so exciting question, if you were an ice cream flavor, what would you be and why? With a 250 word essay and $1,500, this is a sweet little scholarship that anyone can strive to earn. And here is Zachary Beeler, and he will be actually speaking about the video and how he came up with the idea. So hi, Zach. Hi. Let's just hear you talk about the video that you made. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, with me going to college, since we're all seniors here, um, I was kind of looking at like what exactly kind of scholarships that I could actually get into. And I was actually taking a personal finance class. And he was showing me all these different websites, and there was one in particular that I got matched for. And I noticed um, a few scholarships that didn't really 
make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. Like they, they just sort of seemed like kind of out of nowhere. Like you usually get like, oh, you know, like here's an essay that you have to write about this certain subject. But yeah. there were all these like weird requirements. And so I went digging and searching and tried to figure out exactly like, okay, so if, if there's this one particular one, like are there, are there any others that are just super specific or, or are there any others that you have to have like a particular skill that not others that not a lot of other people yeah. would really own. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So I went looking for that and I came out with a whole bunch of different scholarships that I think a lot of people watching here would either really appreciate to know that they actually exist <laughs> or would actually help them get, you know, easy money for colleges. So yeah. it's it's not just in a learning of like, oh look at these weird scholarships. It could actually potentially help people really pay for their college. Cool. Mm -hmm. Would you do any of them? I think I would. Uh, th uh, there's one particular one. I'll spoil a little bit of the video. <laughs> uh, it's for tall people, just specifically tall people. If you meet a certain requirement height, you get just $2,000. $2,000? Yeah, just straight up, just for any financial need that you need for the college. So it's a lot of scholarships like that, like very specific things yeah. that could really help you. What was your favorite one? What was the weirdest one that you read about? I think uh, the weirdest one? Yeah. Um, I'm, it, it should be in the video. I think it's called the Asparagus Club. Asparagus Club? Yes. Uh, it's, it's about um, learning how to be a grocer. Uh, so like studying how to be someone in the grocery business and you get $5,000. That's very weird. Mm -hmm. that it is, is very it is weird. incredibly weird. Okay, well thank you for sharing about the video and about the facts and I hope they'll enjoy watching it as mm -hmm. I will too. We will be right back after this commercial break. What are you looking at? More than half of people who die in car wrecks aren't wearing their seatbelt. Oh yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to Cat's Couch. Now we have a segment about war reenactment and I will be interviewing Stephen Stroop, a student that knows a lot about it. Hi Stephen. Hey, how's it going? Good. So let's just start off with how long have you been into the Civil War? Like what makes you like it so much? Pretty much ever since I was a little boy. Uh, I remember seeing my dad's paintings of just Civil War battles taking place and everything. Okay. And I started talking to him about it and started reading about it and I just was enthralled with it. So you were inspired by your dad then? Yeah, pretty nice. Much. Um, what do you do in a reenactment? Let's talk about the reenactment. A reenactment, surprisingly, the group I'm with, Iron Grays, is, is a more mainstream group. Okay. Which means we don't wear wool underwear and we don't really speak in character. But I mean, we still wear the clothing that they wore back then. We ate, we eat like they do. We sleep like they do. Oh gosh. Um, we shoot like they do. I mean, shooting a musket. Yeah. You gotta know the form, how to shoot it. You gotta know how to reload it, fix bayonets. It's insane. So, so you talked about earlier that you're gonna be in one. When is this happening? Gonna happen tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes, ma'am. Good luck with that. Thank you. Um, have you been in one before? This is actually gonna be my first time, but a friend of my dad's is 
He's been doing it for over 25 years. Right. He's told me everything I need to know. Yeah, so who actually runs the reenactment that you're going to be doing? It's actually a group effort. I mean, you had to have certain people do schedules, okay. people, you know, make contacts of where we're going to sleep, mm -hmm. where we can park, and where we can set up camp, and what we can do there. So this is like a real experience? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very big. And, I mean, it's also got to be with us in general too because if you don't have enough people signing up for this yeah. specific battle you can't do it you can't do it right. so thank good thing people signed up for it yeah where is it located this one is going to take place in new Bern, north carolina okay I, I believe this one is open to the public okay which we have certain ones that are open to the public and certain ones that are not yeah but um this is going to be a three-day battle a three-day battle yep so i sleep on the ground for three days you sleep on the ground? In the same uniform, yeah. What do your parents think about it? Uh, my dad, he's going to be doing it with me. Oh, so. gosh, really? Yep. So. Nice. What does your mom think? She's all going home for it. Once three-day <laughs> vacation, so she'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what items can you bring on this reenactment? Basically, only items that are historically accurate and what they had during the time. Same thing with food. You can bring saltine crackers, some mm -hmm. meat, canned nut foods, but... You can't bring like an electric toothbrush or any of that. Oh my god! <laughs> a lot of times they have store clerks there yeah. that you can buy the exact okay. stuff. So you won't be like having to search eBay or Amazon, get <laughs> one day shipping and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. so what are some specific items that you're not allowed to bring? Well, definitely electric toothbrushes. That, yeah. Uh, you can't bring your cell phone. No cell phone no, for three days? No technology whatsoever. Oh god. Um. Basically the main stuff like that, I mean, you've got to bring certain fruits too. You can't bring like a banana to a battle in North Carolina because they didn't have that fruit back then. They didn't have that. That was not an option for them to eat during that time. Are you serious? You can't yeah. bring a banana? No, I mean, you can bring things such as like apples, maybe oranges, and bread. Wow. Is it in the same spot every year or does it travel to different locations? Uh, we will have hundreds of different reenactments yeah. per year. And these are different groups that set up reenactments, but you can join either one you want. Yeah. But uh, w what happens is a lot of times we do the major battles. Okay, so yeah. New Bern is really one of the only out of two battles that took place in North mm -hmm. Carolina. We were pretty much untouched during the war. Okay. So, I mean, we'll go up to Antigua. One's going to be taking place in, I think, April. April, okay. In Montgomery, Alabama. Nice. So. so, is there any specific, like, time that it starts and ends? Like, what time does the reenactment begin? Um, pretty much, it's, we set it up the night before we set up camp, the night before. Oh, the night before. The day. It, right, then um, right when that morning hits around 5 o'clock, that's when you get up, you march, do yeah. drills. and. So can you explain what the, si the sleeping situation is like sleeping again? Sleeping situation That's for scary. an average soldier, you have basically a quilt that you lay on the ground and you sleep. That's it. Uh, you're allowed to set up a fire right next to you, but other than that, no. You don't have a tent. You don't have really a blanket. You sleep in the wool cotton blend uniform that you have oh on gosh. the ground. <laughs> oh my gosh. I would not like that. <laughs> um, how often is there a reenactment? Does it happen once every year, once every month? Like, how oft do you know how often these occur? Um, a lot of times you look on Facebook of different reenactors, and they'll send you letters in the mail mm -hmm. on when the one's taking place. But y like I said earlier, there's hundreds taking place, but they ask for each person to at least do four reenactments per year. Four reenactments per year. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what battles, like what specific battles are you going to do? Is it Civil War? All Civil War. The Civil War battles? Mm hmm Okay, how many is that? Is that a lot? Oh, yeah. Uh, this one, yeah, I'm currently doing the Battle of New Bern, which took okay. place in 1862 and 1864, I believe, which is one of the only two battles that really took place in North Carolina. Uh, Gettysburg, I'm hoping to do, Antietam. Oh, my gosh. Um, I really wanted to go to Alabama. Yeah. But I don't have time for that one, yeah. so... What is a specific, like, what does a day entail? Like, what does your day look like? Basically, you wake up at the break of dawn, you march, um, basically make sure your rifle's ready, set to go. Okay. 
um, go through the reenacting, um, which the battles and everything that takes place. Mm -hmm. You do that from, geez, about six hours, then okay. you know, <laughs> all, all the way to when sun sets, then that's when you have fires, you eat and you go to sleep and start it all over again the next day. Wow. So. Well, you loving history, you're going to love this. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Would you recommend it? Well, if you're definitely a history buff, yeah. kind of like me, I mean, definitely do it. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a great experience. Okay. You either love it or you're going to hate it. So. Cool. Well, thank you so much for being here and talking about that. No problem. Really interesting. So we talked about High School Musical. We talked about Stephen going on the war reenactment. And we talked about weird school scholarships. Thank you so much for watching Cat's Couch, and we'll see you next Thursday like always.